we're going to be talking about Iman in Allah. Iman meaning belief. So belief in Allah also means belief in His existence, His unique oneness of dominion, His names and attributes, and His right to be worshipped alone. But there are pillars of Iman. There are certain aspects of Iman that the scholars have listed. So Iman is faith, is belief in the heart, a statement by a tongue upon the pillars of Islam. Iman is all forms of deeds done by the heart and with the limbs. From the, are, they're all from the reality of Iman. Iman has branches and levels, some of which, if abandoned, are disbelief, while others are sins, minor or major, yet others cost just a loss of reward. Iman increases with obedience, and it reaches its completion and decreases with sin. And the deeds of the limbs, with the exception of the formal prayer, are either from the completion of obligatory Iman or recommended Iman. So, inshallah, I wanted to just give some advice from the Prophet Sallallahu Abu Huraira said that the Prophet Sallallahu said, Remember the destroyer of pleasures often. He also said, I used to forbid you from visiting graves, but now you should visit them, for it softens the heart, fills the eyes with tears, and reminds one of the hereafter. So when you when you uh, when you live in a, a place that has a, a Muslim graveyard, you should try to go to it, inshallah, and try to visit it. And there's uh, special du'as and prayers that you can say for the inhabitants of the grave, because we're all going to end up there, no matter what kind of little discussions that you want to have with this person and that person. We're all going to end up in the grave, and it, it really brings a lot of priority to your life to reflect upon death. So um, this is my advice to you and for myself, inshallah, to visit a Muslim graveyard, make du'a for the inhabitants, and remember these this often, so we can. Keep Keep ourselves in check. So, so in Surah to Yasin, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala uh, talks about uh, Prophet Nuh and the uh, and the Ark that he uh, he had him build. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentions, you know, there is an assign for them that I carried their father far, forefathers in a loaded ship. So we we have this example. We understand that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala inspired Prophet Nuh with the design of a ship because people had not traveled through the water before the time of Prophet Nuh. Now, what was amazing to me to study when I studied the tafsir of this ayah is that all boats, all all seafaring vessels are actually based upon the knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Prophet Nuh in building the ark. So it's it's a fascinating note of history that this is that was, was the first boat, obviously it was the per, first uh, seafaring ship, and it was something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given to Prophet Nuh to, to save him at the time when he was punishing the earth. So I want to talk about the Ayam al-Bid. Ayam al-Bid are the three days in the middle of the lunar calendar that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, has legislated us for us to fast. So we find this in the Sunnah that the Islamic calendar, these 13th and 14th and 15th days were Sunnah for the Muslims to fast. And so we can still uh, discover what the Hijrah date is and try to fast these three days. But why? I, I listened to a sheikh and I asked him a question about this and he said, you know, because the, the lunar month is the, what it's based off of, this is the middle of the month when the moon is full. And when the moon is full, our bodies, are, 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 um, our desires reach up higher. They get, they get higher because our bodies are mostly water. And the tides come up and so our bodies also, we have this, uh, this reaction and, you know, we're more agitated. So it's, it's important for us to fast on these three days to make sure that we remain calm and remain level in, um, in controlling our desires, subhanAllah. So we're going to be talking about Allah's name Al-Aziz and uh, we already discussed Allah's name Al-Aziz but we're going to mention it again because there are three aspects of this name Al-Aziz. The mighty with regard to his ability which is so great that nothing can be compared to it. The mighty with respect to his domination and his absolute authority over all creation and the mighty from the perspective of the impossibility of any deficiency or defect being attributed to him. So uh, now we're going to get scientific, inshallah, with the ayahs of Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in, um, in ayah 38 in Surah Yasin what could mean, and the sun runs on its course to a place of settling, and that is the decree of the Almighty, the All-Knowing. So this word mustaqar, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses this word, this means place of settling. Okay, so this ayah has it here. Now, modern astronomy confirms that the solar system is indeed moving through space towards a point situated in the constellation of Hercules, whose exact location has been precisely calculated and given the name the solar apex. Now, we don't believe in this ayah because science confirms that this is true, that mustaqar actually is a, a place where the solar system is going to come to rest. But that we... 
we uh, it increases our belief and it increases and augments our belief and it gives us strength when we discuss Islam with others and the scientific miracles of the Quran. So we're going to be looking at uh, some more from uh, Surah Yasin. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala brings about the parable of gardens and grapes and all the things that Allah has given us in this life, but that you know one day these things are going to perish and one day we might not even be able to eat you know what comes out of a garden and we're going to be reduced to a certain state. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us, you know, that the disbelievers that might, might be wallowing in blessings, they may have everything in this life, but they're still miserable because gratefulness to Allah for what you have and remembering Allah for the blessings that you have given, this is what brings your life true happiness. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to TikTok Tafsir. So we're going to be talking about Iman in Allah, Iman meaning belief. So belief in Allah also means belief in His existence his unique oneness of dominion, his names and attributes, and his right to be worshipped alone. But there are pillars of Iman, there are certain aspects of Iman that the scholars have listed. So, Iman is faith, is belief in the heart, a statement by a tongue, upon the pillars of Islam. Iman is all forms of deeds done by the heart and with the limbs, from the, are, they're all from the reality of Iman. Iman has branches and levels, some of which, if abandoned, are disbelief, while others are sins, minor or major, yet others cost just a loss of reward. Iman increases with obedience, and it reaches its completion, and decreases with sin. And the deeds of the limbs, with the exception of the formal prayer, are either from the completion of obligatory Iman or recommended Iman. Um, says that uh, the man from Yasin, he said, and put me among those who are honored. So this is uh, a way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honors us by allowing us to get to the paradise, inshallah. So entrance into paradise is an honor from Allah. And the levels in paradise that people can get to is also an honor from Allah. So there are different levels. And subhanAllah, sometimes we have maybe an issue with another Muslim who was doing what they're supposed to do, um, but we just have had an issue or a problem with them. And maybe we wonder you know, which one of us is going to paradise because you don't expect to be able to get along with this person, but we know there's no fighting in paradise. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will settle what's in the hearts and will make clear what is hidden. And it will be easy for people who deserve gender to get along together there. We're taking a look now at uh, the Ayah 30 from Surah Yasin, and uh, there's a part at the at the beginning. Ya hasharat al ibad. So this is a this means um, in English what a pity for humankind. This is a beautiful uh, beautiful tafsir because you look at the different things that different uh, scholars have actually said about this ayah. This ayah could have been said. By, um, by it just could be a statement of those people of Yasin that they that they didn't listen, and that's a pity that they didn't listen. Also, other commentators like Mujahid said that the the people who killed the believer will say that when they see the punishment in the hellfire for what they did, and still uh, still other um, Abdullah said that it was made by the angels regarding the disbelievers who rejected the message. So, Subhanallah, uh, when you read Tafsir and you study it in depth of the Quran and the and the meaning, then you can see that there's so much to learn. So, Inshallah, we'll keep studying together. So, have you ever heard the word karma being used, or you know, next life? Uh, you know, my, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna come back and haunt you, or those kinds of things that people say, and, and it's, it's, uh, it's taken lightly, but these are actually huge issues in Islam, and for us to uh, be, be kind of throwing around these ideas is, is, uh, it's, it's scary because when Allah Subhanahu wa Taala had destroys a people. It's an ayah for those of us who are left behind to realize that we're only going to live in this world one time. We get one chance and we have to get it right. Incarnation is held by many different kinds of nations. Um, there's called samsara in Hinduism and the transmigration of souls and all these other things. And, you know, karma is another one um, to, to describe this uh, reincarnation idea. But what does this belief do? It allows the followers to deny the final judgment and it reduces the significance of this life. So we have to be very careful of using these and, and having these ideas because they are antithetical to Islam. So we're going to be taking a look at uh, one ayah from uh, Surah Ta Yasin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قَالَ يَا لَيْتَ قَوْمِي يَعْلَمُونَ بِمَا غَفَرَ لِي رَبِّي So this is to mean, he said, only, if only my people knew that my Lord has forgiven me. So this word, غفر, غفر, this is from the term maghfira. This is uh, forgiveness, right? From Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's derived from mirfar, which is a helmet. So this is very interesting. It's one of the main reasons I love Arabic. There's so many things to know uh, about the words that Allah has chosen. So what does a helmet do? It covers the head. 
and it guards and protects the head. So when we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness and we have this act and Allah forgives us, He covers over our sins and it also protects us from falling into sin again, having that humility and asking Allah for forgiveness. So now we're going to talk about an ayah from Surah Fusilat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَا إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what could mean and who is better in speech then he who invites to Allah does righteous deeds and says, I am one of the Muslims. So this is good news for Muslim creators. And if you are a Muslim and you're thinking about making some creations, then you should go ahead and make some more videos because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whoever broadcasts his, his faith in Allah, whoever at least just says, La ilaha illallah, and just talks about what he knows and something very simple or what she knows, simple stuff inshallah just explaining and telling other people this is a perfect platform to do it so uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions many different times in the quran about how he brings life to the dead land there is a sign in them for the dead land i give it life and bring out of it grain so they may eat from it so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is bringing in scientific information of course uh, you know for us to understand and we see that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to go through the seasons and you know, there is a few months of one and then there's another season after that. You know, the plants are dead certain time of year and they come back to life at another time of year. This is always supposed to be there for us to remind us of the Day of Judgment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring us back to this to 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 life and for us to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be judged you know according to our deeds and this is a very important understanding so when we see the seasons change it should remind us of the seasons of this life about how we're going to become older and older and then we're going to be resurrected in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the second part of ayah 30 in surah yasin mentions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said what could mean whenever a messenger came to them they mocked and they mocked him. So we understand that the denigration of the prophets took place in pre-Christian times where the most corrupt and depraved stories were, were made up and recorded about the major Jewish prophets and those who preceded them. This ridicule of the ridicule of the divine messengers became a part of the Jewish and Christian religious literature today known as the Old Testament. So when uh, when I was growing up, you know, uh, there were stories and we read about the prophets at the time and we're just thinking like there's all these horrible stories. I mean, some of them are really disgusting and it's uh, it's it is a huge shame and it is a big sin because they messed with the actual stories of the prophets and these things are confirmed what's in the Quran. So that's why, you know, for us, uh, we read what's in the Quran and we rely on the Islamic literature for the reality of what took place before, before with Allah's prophets. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to TikTok Tafsir. So 